Let's begin with uh, what you've seen so far. It's a very small sample size from Mike White, but my goodness, Coach, he was absolutely destroyed in the game against Buffalo last week. I saw a lot of the comments uh, from the players after that game. They all respected the hell out of this kid. Does he? It's, again, very small sample size here and only a couple of games to go on, and if you go back to last year as well. Does he remind you of any players that you had when you were a coach in this league, either an OC or a head coach, that were – you know, not giving a lot of credit. Not people didn't really like respect them, but came out of nowhere to really impress people. You know, those are my kind of guys. I had four or five of those guys in the league, and they're the ones that've been knocked around a little bit. They got something to prove, and they're smart and they're talented. And for whatever reason, if you're a late round pick, you're, you're basically tabbed as a potential backup at best, and you got to disprove all those things. And, he, and Mike certainly did that. He reminds me of Kerr, it's a little bit like. What Kurt did here. Here's the thing that's amazing about Mike. Remember now that offense, that the offensive coordinator has passed away. The receiver coach has never coached receivers and the quarterback coach has never coached quarterbacks. So he's doing all this with virtually kind of feeling his way out, but he, the ball comes out so fast. He's so decisive. He's accurate. He's tough. Uh, the, the reason he got knocked around so bad is they, they had some real horrendous mistakes in blitz pickup. And they had guys coming free right up the gut on them three or four times, and you just can't have that. that that's a that's a coaching area, era, and it's just unfortunate. It does happen. You get surprised, but that has to be fixed on the sideline immediately. But you think the Jets will be fine with Mike White maybe moving mm-hmm. forward this year and if they get into the playoffs? You know, I'm a big fan of his. You know, I, I just watched him. Here's what I've always felt. When you watch a quarterback – play a whole game like he did and be and play and beat the blitz and do all the things that are difficult, make throws under duress, things that the really good ones do. The average ones don't really do. The really good ones do. He has those traits. And if you get out of him once, you need to get it out of him every week. And I, I think it's there. I I'm a big fan of his. Um, I like everything about this kid and you know, hopefully they'll stay with him. Well, you're the perfect guy to ask because what you did in 99 was incredible. Uh, Trent Green goes down. Everyone thinks the season's over, and then you turn this into the greatest show on turf, and you win the Super Bowl. And what happened with Warner that you won with an Arena Football League guy? Now, what do you see with Purdy now, and is he your kind of guy, Mr. Irrelevant here winning games? You know, here's the thing about all those guys. Um, It's all in preparation. You know, as long as they know exactly – where the ball's supposed to go in each pass play and what their responsibilities are and that you don't cloud up as long as you're specific and in, in what you're telling the guy and your reads are. And I've been in some of those rooms uh, when I retired, I traveled around a little bit and visit some guys. And I, I, I'm telling you, I came out of some of those quarterback rooms. I didn't know where the ball's supposed to go. You got to be very specific with these guys. And if you're specific, the ball will come out real fast. They'll know exactly what to do. And if a guy that's talented, and tough like he is, and they're accurate, uh, they'll play well. Uh, it doesn't surprise me. Purdy's just like Bulger, that story. Mm-hmm. Bulger, uh, you know, we, Kurt went down, and then his backup, Jamie Martin, went down, and Bulger hadn't taken a snap all year. This is the sixth game of the season, and I told him it's his turn, and he said it's about time. I remember he hasn't taken a snap. He's just been in the meetings. And we go in and, and beat a an unbeaten Oakland team that went to the Super Bowl that year, and he – he went 98 yards and threw a touchdown pass in his first series. So it's about preparation and having the ability and then just having that determination. This is my opportunity, and I'm not going to blow it. Let's follow the money here on VSIN, the Sports Betting Network. Mike Martz, our guest, former NFL head coach, won a Super Bowl in the league as well. Great offensive coordinator on top of that now with the 33rd team.com as an, uh, as an analyst there. Okay, so... How do you think, and we're going to see this at least one more time this year in the regular season, maybe a second time in the playoffs, how do you think the Cowboys match up with the Eagles on paper, then on the field, and do you see any weaknesses at all in Jalen Hurts' game at this point? I don't see any weaknesses in Philadelphia at all. Uh, I think uh, the issue will be the Cowboy offensive line against the Eagles' defensive front. I think that that'll determine everything. I, I do think that the Cowboys match up very well against receivers. I like their secondary. And I, I do think two things about the Cowboys, the offensive line. And in the past, you know, with the speed that they have on the edges, it's very difficult to get the ball outside the running game, but inside they've been pounded a little bit. And, you know, they've, 
if you're patient and do what San Francisco has done in the past to teams like that, you know, you can hurt them and keep them off the field offensively and, and that sort of thing. So I will tell you the team I don't, I would not want to play right now is the Detroit Lions. They're playing as well mm-hmm. as anybody right now. That's a great story. I mean, I'm in a blackjack tournament. If I win it, I get a $20,000 Super Bowl bet. Who would, who would, oh, who wow. should, yeah, who should I bet? Who's going to win the Super Bowl? Oh, wow. Wow. Huh. Well, I still think that, uh, I think Philadelphia is a safe bet. But I, I, I know you think I'm crazy. I, I love the, see, when you're on fire and you get momentum, the pretenders in September, contenders in December. That's the old saying, right? Okay. All you got to do is get in. Remember the Giants back, I think, in 05 or 06? Remember they started off, they were under 500 halfway through and they won the Super Bowl. Well, it's, it's, you know, I'm telling you, Detroit in the last five or six games, nobody's played better than them. And they made a change on defense and it absolutely helped them. So who, anybody can get, you know, it's just get in the, get in the dance, so to speak, and play your best football and they can win it. Okay. You, you, the Eagles, you like the Eagles path though. One seed, win two games during the Super Bowl though. That, that, yeah, I don't yes. think yeah. they're, I think they're clearly the best team in the league. I think it would be yeah. very difficult for Dallas to beat them. Um, I just don't know if they're physical enough. They match up speed wise, but you know, I, I do think that they had the advantage they have over Dallas. I believe that uh, the Eagles really do a good job formationing and isolating defenses. A little bit like like what they do at Kansas City. They do a great job with that, as does San Francisco. Yeah. Do, do you think Detroit beats the Jets and Mike White? Yes. You do? Okay, wow. Okay. Okay. What's good. your pecking order? Here, here, here's uh, the uh, thing about hmm? Detroit, guys. Nobody, remember, that wasn't a fluke, that, that game last week with uh, uh, Minnesota. That was no fluke. No. That's a team only lost two games. The game I, I'd like to see right now is Detroit and Philadelphia. I mean, they... They're putting up thirty over thirty points a game. Who does that? Nope. You know, Kansas City, and they're better on defense. I just uh, here's the thing: as a coach, I watch. The first thing I watch is the energy that a team plays with. Okay. And if they can keep up in a game, it doesn't ebb and flow. But Dallas has always had that ebb and flow effect. Philadelphia always keeps that energy up, but they, you know, they almost got beat here while they were just a tired football team. Detroit is just hitting their stride. They're a scary team to play right now. We have about two minutes left. I love this Bengals team. Uh, I bet them to win the Super Bowl uh, a while back. What is your pecking order in the AFC? Where would you rank the Bengals like uh, at the top with the Chiefs and the Bills in mind? Oh, the Bengals are, are the best team in the AFC in my mind, wow. period. I mean, I think that they're – it's just like we're talking about momentum – they stumbled around the gate, coming out of the gate here early in the year, and they just had some injuries. And now with Chase, with a receiver back, those two receivers combined with Mixon coming back, they're playing solid defense. And that quarterback is, uh, you know, he's one of the top two or three in the league right now. So, uh, you know, there's, you know, Kansas City can't beat him. You know, it's kind of like the hold that San Francisco had over LA for years, right? So, yeah. I just think that uh, it's probably going to come down to Cincinnati and Philadelphia in the Super Bowl. Cincinnati and Philadelphia. I'd sign up for that. Yeah. Visit VEASAN.com to get current odds. Listen for free. Find showtimes and download VEASAN's sports betting podcasts.